Hello, uh, welcome back to uh, this presentation. Uh, today we are looking at uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders. Okay, we are looking at chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders, uh, also known as COPDs. So these are conditions that arise from the respiratory system and they cause obstruction, as the name uh, suggests, that they are obstructive disorders, they cause obstruction, they block the flow of air inside uh, and out of the respiratory system. This COPD is, COPD is a common and treatable disease characterized by progressive air for limitation tissue, uh, and tissue destruction. So following uh, uh, tissue destruction, the flow of air can be obstructed. And if it persists, it will result in what is known as uh, COPDs. It is associated with structural lung changes due to chronic inflammation from prolonged exposure to noxious particles or gases, most commonly cigarette smoking. This chronic inflammation causes air when narrowing and decreased lung recoil. We know the lung has a property of recoiling. So once they are, it, has, uh, it has had a bout of uh, a bout of uh, these infections or inflammation, that property of recording can, uh, can be compromised, hence resulting in disease which often presents with cough symptoms, dyspnea, as well as sputum production, excessive sputum production. Symptoms can range, uh, can range from being asymptomatic to respiratory failure. So this is what a normal lung is supposed to look like. On top here, we have the healthy lung tissue, okay? But due to infection and due to the effects of COPD, this elasticity, if you have looked, if you look at the, uh, the shape and uh, the consistency of this picture, uh, of the alveolar in these pictures, you are going to see that at least they are showing some picture of recoiling in them, showing the normal shape, the distinct shape in which they are supposed to be. But following bouts of infection in what is known as COPDs, they lose their elasticity to the extent where they become uh, so inelastic, they become so flabby, to the extent where they now look like what we can see in the pictures here, due to clogging of sputum in this, in the lining which is uh, shown in green, okay? <clears throat> Epidemiology. COPD is primarily present in smokers and those over the age of 40 years, and prevalence increases with age and is currently the third most common cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. In 2015, the prevalence of COPD was about 174 million, and there were approximately 3.2 million deaths due to COPDs. This is not a small number. 3.2 million is a very big number that is coming from one type of condition. However, the prevalence is likely to be underestimated due to underdiagnosis of COPDs. So some conditions go undiagnosed or they are wrongly diagnosed. As we are all aware, in the African setting, we lack these statistics and a lot of conditions go uncaptured. So that means this 3.2 million number is still very high, including plus those uh, that are not yet captured. So COPD is a group of disorders that present in such a way. Among them is chronic bronchitis. Chronic bronchitis is defined as a chronic cough and sputum production for at least three months, three months a year for two consecutive years. Okay, so before we get there, it consists, it comprises of the number of conditions that block the airway and due to uh, due to some abnormalities which have which we have already highlighted. Okay, amongst them consists of chronic bronchitis, asthma. Uh, um, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, amongst others. So those are some of the few that we are going to talk about. 
And we are just going to talk about those that actually hold the common symptom, that, that are prototypes of what will be happening in other smaller conditions. So at least those four, we are going to talk about them. Okay, so chronic bronchitis is defined as a chronic cough and this preterm production for at least three months a year for two consecutive years. It is covered under the umbrella term chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. That is where, that, that is in which uh, chronic bronchitis is. It is one of the COPDs. The COPD spectrum ranges from emphysema, actually it's also one of them, emphysema to chronic bronchitis. Many patients have characteristics of both emphysema and chronic bronchitis, putting them somewhere along, uh, along the spectrum. Chronic bronchitis is the inflammation and excessive mucus buildup in the bronchi, whereby emphysema occurs when the alveolar membrane breaks down and they fail to hold. So we are saying these symptoms can arise and can be there for some time, but during your physical examination, you actually notice that your patient will tell you these symptoms that uh, uh, will give you the symptoms of obstruction, which should at least last for at least two consecutive years, lasting for at least three months in each one of those years. So for instance, something can happen, a patient, when they come for your uh, for examination, for your treatment, you can examine them. When, during your examination, they'll tell you that maybe starting from March to June, on your past medical history, they'll tell you that they experienced this terrible kind of cough, which was obstructive in nature from March to June. Then you'll find that actually within the same period the following year, they may be presenting in the same way, and within a same period, within the same period in the following year. So that will make it at least, uh, uh, that will make it three uh, months, three, con three months of the year in two consecutive years. So you capture that in your past medical history, which is very important that you're supposed to know how to conduct your physical examination so that you capture these conditions. Otherwise, it will go and diagonized or wrongly diagonized and it may lead to death. The overall prognosis for most of the patients is poor, that is in emphysema. So it starts with chronic bronchitis. There's this type of emphysema which starts with chronic bronchitis, and it goes to the, when it goes beyond the, chronic bronchitis is actually can be reversed at some point. So when it goes to irreversible levels, then it, tra it, it, it transcends in what is known as emphysema, which occurs when the alveolar membrane breaks down. The overall prognosis for most patients is poor, with many patients being disabled from progressive, uh, progressive shortness of breath, and the prevalence of the disease has a great impact on society and the healthcare system around the world. So once it gets to emphysema, then it goes to levels that are worse and it is difficult to control. The occurrence of chronic bronchitis in the general population has been documented to vary between three to 7% in healthy individuals. And it is estimated to be as high as 74% among those diagnosed with it, COPDs. Subjects under the age of 50 years who are otherwise healthy and have chronic bronchitis are at higher risk of morbidity and mortality when compared to healthy subjects. The increasing prevalence of chronic bronchitis is thought to be associated with increasing age, tobacco smoking, occupational sport, exposure, and social economic status. So when you look at all these things, they actually uh, are prevalent. They are falling much on the lifestyle, okay? Tobacco smoking, increasing age, not on lifestyle, but the other factors that have been highlighted are lifestyle factors. There are, there, there are many known causes of uh, chronic bronchitis. The most important causative factor is exposure to cigarette smoke, either due to active smoking or passive inhalation. Other causes include inhaled irritants, viral infection, okay, genetic factors, and all those, including the genetic marker, which is indicative of emphysema, but many patients on the COPD spectrum as characteristics of both emphysema and the chronic 
bronchitis. So there are some factors that would be due to the uh, some factors that would be due, due to genetic when you profile them, you actually find that it is coming from somewhere around the family. People with associated background of respiratory disease such as asthma, cystic fibrosis, or bronchitis have a higher predisposition to develop chronic bronchitis. Chronic bronchitis is thought to be caused by overproduction and hypersecretion of mucus by the goblet cells. So once there is irritation, the normal response for secretory, organ, secretory cells is to increase the secretion, okay? Is to increase the secretion. So due to, in, to, due to injury or irritation in the respiratory system, the goblet cells respond by overproducing they are uh, they, what they produce, which is mucus, which now leads to this abnormality, which is the hallmark of uh, chronic bronchitis. Epithelial cells lining the airways respond to toxic infections, infectious stimuli by releasing inflammatory mediators and pro-inflammatory cytokines. This in turn leads to airflow impediment because of luminal obstruction. Uh, to the airway. You know, the body is made in such a way that it is supposed to produce a certain amount of uh, air, of, of, of mucus, that is the respiratory system, is meant to produce a certain amount of mucus, which is supposed to be cleared in physiological, given physiological means. But due to the irritation that has been, that, that you have subjected the lumen, the respiratory airway to, this normal clearance is lost, and the air has become clogged by debris, and this further increases the, the irritation. And that is what is going to cause the obstruction. So the, norm, the normal airway is supposed to be as clear as what you can see on this uh, diagram here. It's an extract from the nun, and when you see here, it is supposed to be that clear. But due to irritation, you know, irritation is coupled with it, inflammation. So inflammation on its own reduces it, the lumen. So once the, uh, the lumen is reduced by inflammation, the goblet cells on the lumen are also inflamed, they overproduce and thereby blocking the airway even further. And that is what uh, qualifies it to be under the obstructive pulmonary diseases. Clinical presentation can be an increased exacerbation rate, okay? Increased exacerbation rate, accelerated decline of uh, lung function, worse health uh, related quality of life, and an increase in mortality. Common symptoms outlined by the British Lung Foundation include wheezing, particularly on breathing out. We know the breath sounds, so wheezing is part of them. Breathlessness, when resting or active. Tight chest, this person will complain of tight, having a tight chest, cough, producing more mucus or frame than usual. These symptoms would be persistent for at least three months in a year for two consecutive years to be considered or to be diagnosed as chronic bronchitis. So that is what makes up chronic bronchitis and that is an overview of chronic bronchitis. But once chronic bronchitis uh, goes uh, and, and uh, I mean, if it goes untreated, it progresses into what is referred to as the emphysema. Therefore, chronic bronchitis and emphysema usually would occur together if not treated. There is a very thin line between emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Only that chronic bronchitis is within the reversible levels. Once it goes into irreversible levels, it progresses into what is known as the emphysema. Emphysema is a progressive lung disease or a form of obstructive pulmonary disease. It is primarily a pathological diagnosis that affects the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles. We know the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles, that's why we find the respiratory bronchioles all the way down into the alveoli. That is where gaseous exchange takes place. So we should have that in mind, knowing what kind of pathology that it is going to bring about. It is characterized by abnormal permanent enlargement of the lung air spaces with the destruction of 
there was without any fibrosis and the destruction of the lung parenchyme, okay, with loss of elasticity. Also, at that point, elasticity is lost, and this lung tissue distal to the terminal bronchioles becomes flabby and it cannot recoil. You know, breathing in and out, especially breathing out, is dependent on the recoiling. So this point, at this point, the recoiling property is lost. Okay, there are three types of emphysema, central sinus emphysema, panacinus emphysema, as well as paraceptal emphysema. In central sinus emphysema, it affects the alveoli and the airways in the central asinus, destroying the alveoli in the walls of the respiratory bronchioles and the alveolar duct. Panacinus emphysema affects the wall asinus, all of it. While paraceptal emphysema is believed to be the basic lesion of pulmonary bullosi disease. Okay. The epidemiology of emphysema is that it is part of the COPDs. Diseases, it is part of the diseases known as COPDs that affects a large number of people worldwide. In 2016, the global burden of disease study reported a prevalence of 250 million cases of COPD globally. Around 90% of COPD deaths occur in low to middle and middle income countries, under which most of uh, us fall. The etiology, the exact cause of emphysema is still yet to be distinguished. However, research is suggesting the prevalence is strongly related to smoking, air pollution, and in some cases, occupation. So this gives you, gives you an idea where this condition should be very prevalent and the countries in which this condition should be very prevalent. Okay. Those that are under development and those that those that are that are undergoing uh, active development and active industrialization. Another common association is the deficiency of alpha one antitrypsin, which is the protein protecting the alveoli. Okay. So the prevalence of emphysema within the smoking population is believed to increase as smoking is the major risk factor. Okay, it is thought that it is thought to have uh, a higher incidence in those with lower socioeconomic background, therefore affecting lifestyle and environment, resulting in the likelihood. Of course, here you find under this group that is affected in the lower socioeconomic background, you find there are issues of uh, ignorance issues of not turning uh, poor, poor lifestyle choices, okay? And it makes them susceptible to developing this disease. The pathophysiology, the alveoli and the small distal airways are primarily affected by the disease followed by effects of the larger airways. Elastic recoil is responsible for recording the airways that much we know at the moment. And in emphysema, the bronchioles lose their stabilizing function and therefore causing a collapse in the air was resulting in gas to be trapped this time. Remember, we were talking about loss of elasticity. The eviction of air from the distal airways is done by elastic recoiling. So with the loss of elasticity in the distal airways, the air that has filled those distal airways cannot be pushed out because they have lost it their elasticity, and that is what happens in emphysema, and it is what leads to air being trapped into the distal, uh, in the distal airways. There is an erosion of the alveolar septa causing there to be an enlargement of the available space, an enlargement of the available space, uh, available air space in the alveoli. There are sometimes a formation of bullet, with their phenols of the diminishing lung tissue. So what I'm trying to say is that once this air has been trapped, you know there is deoxygenated air there, air is not well uh, exchanged. And those areas where they are trapped are tissues which also survive by, uh, of, of which their integrity is maintained by uh, 